This is the third iteration of trying to use these 60 gallon bladders in the uh, reinforced steel cage on Van Margaret here. So this is the gray water bladder. Um, these bungees aren't to hold the water up, they're just to hold the empty bladder kind of so, it, so one bladder doesn't get trapped underneath the other. This bladder over here is the freshwater bladder. Um, so fresh water comes in there and uh, goes into the freshwater bladder here. There is a T and that's for priming the hot water heater. Uh, I guess I can show you that now. Basically the water heater is uh, a tankless eco temp model and uh, it's kind of it's kind of cool. It's got a little touch screen. You can set the temperature and whatnot. Um, but any tankless water heater is sitting there with you know cold water in it. And so this valve here you just tip that up and that'll um, bypass hot water back into the fresh water tank so you don't waste water um, priming that water heater. So back at the tank you've got uh, a vent line here at the top of the gray water tank and this vent line goes up and up to the roof and I just used a stock tank fitting and a couple elbows up above. I'll show you that in a second. Um, underneath this sloped panel here at the back of the inside the cage are two whale gulper pumps and when they pump they do pump a significant amount of air as well as the water from the drains so they so one of those there's a sensor here in the bottom of the shower and then here in the sink there is a sensor here and these sensors when they pick up water when they detect water they turn the whale gul gulper pump on but the gulpers as you know, gulping, they gulp air, um, they pump air and water in. So the, uh, as this uh, gray water tank fills up, they start pumping bubbles up into it. So they pump water and some air, but the bubbles, my hope is that they'll come up out of this tube and get vented off. And then the uh, gulpers pump up this line and then down into the tank. And I'm going to cap this, but this is going to be a vacuum breaker vent here so that say that say the gray water tank was very full and you park someplace you wouldn't want to somehow get a siphon going that siphoned all the water back out of the drain you know into the shower and flood the van so this will have a one-way valve that'll let air in but won't let water out and um, that'll make sure that a siphon gets broken but no water comes out there so we'll go take a look at the vent and the fill outside the fill is quite conventional. It's just a regular RV thing bolted on there. Um, but if you look inside there, the way the hose is worked out is I actually have a hose inside that instead of outside of it where it belongs because I didn't want to have a bunch of adapters. So in order to get the water to go in, I've created this little uh, kind of a stinger here that goes on the end of the hose out of a piece of 3H PEX. So um, basically you can slide that stinger in there and uh, we'll see how that works. I'm not completely convinced it's a solution yet. And there's a quick shot of my stock tank fittings and PVC pipe uh, vent for the gray water tank. It'll let the air out that the gulpers pump in and if there's any kind of foul odor from stuff sitting in there too long it will uh, vent out there as well. So the gray water tank um, to continue the fill pipe is that pipe right in the center of the screen it goes under that piece of tape there's a T um, where you can see the bag pulling on it there, the bladder. And then the pipe continues out the back. So to drain this thing, you just come out the back and there's a hose fitting and a ball valve and then a, a safety cap. Just so you have to make sure nothing gets leaks when you're going down the road. Part of the idea of this van was to keep everything inside so that we can use it in the wintertime. We hope to use it as a ski vehicle. So basically you just get the bladders kind of straightened out in here. Then on the uh, on the freshwater tank, we already talked about the fill, which is this line here. You can see the blue of the stinger in it, and then the uh, the bypass for priming the uh, water heater. And that all goes into the uh, freshwater bladder here, and then at the bottom of the freshwater bladder, there's a. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. 
Okay, so there's that pipe. That's the intake to the pressure pump. And it, I've kind of recessed the elbow down in there to make sure that the last little bit of water can get used out of this tank in my full capacity. So when the tanks are flaccid, this is just how they sit. And uh, typically you wouldn't you typically wouldn't have both tanks flaccid like this. You'd leave with the freshwater tank full, come back with a gray water tank full and the freshwater tank empty. And so there'd always be the same amount of weight in the van at the same location. So we'll get a time lapse set up and you see as long as we're talking about it here, the fresh water coming out of the tank goes through um, the little screen, just a normal screen. No, that's nothing custom about that. And then on the back side of the screen, come the that's the intake hose for the fresh water. Goes to this SureFlow pump, comes out, goes to an accumulator. Um, then out of the accumulator, you've got the cold line there. Cold line goes up to the water heater there, cold line goes underneath to this kitchen sink over there. And then back from the water heater, you've got your hot line and the hot goes up to the shower head and then the hot pops over to um, back underneath to the sink. And then you've also got this hot line here that with the bypass for the shower. The uh, One of the cool things about this water heater is that you can set the temperature. Um, so you can just set the temperature to like 120, which is the default. That's like hot water, too hot to stand in. But you could also set the temperature. Uh, I think it's locked. I think you have to push this and unlock it here. So you can also set the temperature down to like, say, I'm imagining a shower, you know, a hot tub feels good at about 100. So imagine a shower feel about right at 100. So you set that at 100, take your shower, and then if you want to do dishes, you kick it up to, to like 120 or whatever you want to do the dishes at. Um, so for that reason, the shower is not a hot and cold mix. The shower is just um, whatever comes out of the water heater. But I think that will actually work well, and time will tell. Um, let me see. The, this water heater is propane, so we got endless hot water. And we don't have to worry about running the van if we've been parked for a week or not. Uh, and then there's just kind of some things here, that some valves and crap that you could use to drain this if you wanted to leave it cold. Although, in the, I thought, although I think if I was going to freeze this, I'd end up uh, probably blowing the whole system with a with a uh, air compressor to make sure it's all cleaned up. Okay, so we've got the bladders all empty here and we've got the uh, little action camera set up to do a time lapse. And we're gonna go turn on the water and hopefully this thing will fill up just like we'd expect it to. Okay, so I've got my little PEX stinger that I made here and uh, just sliding that down the hose a little ways and turn on the valve and that um, gives you something for the hose to hang on and it's uh, small enough that it lets air vent back out of the tank and far enough in there that the water doesn't blow back so that's going right now we'll take a look inside and inside here you can uh, hear it coming in and uh, I guess it's a little hard to tell but it's going into that pipe there the stinger comes all the way to there and then if there's water's got to blow back, it'll have to figure out some way to blow back. It'll, it'll work it out, I guess, in the end of the day. Alright, so we'll got the time lapse going. We'll see how that goes. And meanwhile, I'm going to come up with some kind of a plug for that. Eventually, that'll get the one-way valve, but right now, it's just going to squirt water when it drains. Okay, so this is the time lapse. The water's already coming in. You can see that tank on the lower part of your screen, which is a freshwater bladder, starting to fill up them fill up some there and then in the uh, upper part that's the gray water tank and it's just going to stay empty through this phase and then I uh, there's a bit here that I'm going to cut out but there's a I find a kink and I fix that okay got that line shortened up and now the water's flowing in um, rather more like it expects. And as you can see, these uh, these cords here, you know, they're not really holding any serious tension. And the tank is 
the freshwater bladder is completely occupying the whole area here. Uh, the water level is about the level of my hand there. Get back for some reference. Um, so we'll just see how much farther it'll go before it starts overflowing out the uh, hose. And at that point, it'll be full. So I've got the hose fixed. The I took a section out, just made it shorter. And you can see the bottom bladder continues to fill up here. As it gets towards the end, there's a problem with venting air back out. It's not horrible, um, but you can see when it deflates like that, that's when I shut off the water outside and air burps out. So I'll have to come up with some kind of solution for the venting on these tanks. I'm not completely satisfied with that yet. So as this thing gets full, it starts to dribble out the side of the van here. Um, what's interesting is you shut the water off and it'll burp out the, some air. So maybe I ought to come up with some other way to vent during filling. I'll, I'll have to look into that. Venting, venting these bladders has turned out to be a much bigger task than I thought it would be. So I'm thinking the tank's pretty full now. I'm going to shut off the valve. I mean, there's quite a bit of water coming out of it. It's obviously not as clean as I'd intend. But then you can see that the air blowing out there. So some I gotta come up with some some better way of venting this something. I mean now that, that air's out, it'll probably take another gallon. Turn it back on. And the water's overflowing, turn it off, and anyway, I'm pretty sure that's I'm gonna call that full. And pull the stinger out, put that away someplace, keep it safe. I'll put the cap on. Nothing like one arm video. Okay, and it's ready to close. Okay, so here's what it looks like inside. Um, let me see, I guess the water level is all the way up in the hose here. Probably if I mess around with it, probably a few air bubbles left in there. But anyway, the water bubbles, the water levels all the way up in that bladder. And then going down, that's our freshwater bladders. Pretty much, I got my janky farm boy cap here until I get the proper vacuum breaker. Um, but that bladder pretty much fills, you know, the whole bottom of the area there. Okay, so for our setup here, we're starting with the freshwater tank full, the gray water tank empty. Got a time lapse lapse camera up there, action cam doing that. Got another action cam here on the stove, and it's going to watch... Um, the bucket here, get that red line is calibrated one gallon. Basically, I'm going to take the shower hose, I'm going to fill that gallon up and count on the time lapse how many gallons we get out of it. And if I was a better video editor, I would probably have done a better job at all this, but yeah, whatever. The two frames aren't exactly lined up because sometimes I'm in both frames. I should have like put my hand in both cameras where I could see it and made a fist or something. Plus, the uh, 4k camera that's filming the tanks is at one fr two frames a second time lapse and the 1920 camera in the shower is only one frame per second so i had to scale them so i'm not sure yeah whatever anyway the idea is that the gray water tank gets bigger fresh water tank gets smaller and at the end of the day you count it all out it's 47 gallons um i'm not quite sure why I'm not getting the full 60 gallons rated of the tanks, but that's still a bucket load of water. <laughs> Get it, bucket, um, for a fan. So I'm fairly happy with that. Okay, so here's how we drain this thing. Just got a hose to drain with. Got the valve off. Um, I've got a rag under here just in case there's any dripple. Take the safety cap off, the hose hooked up. And crank the valve open. Now it's draining. I got a super long hose on here. We don't need that long of a hose. So now we're back to the time lapse of the tank draining. The bottom bladder there is the freshwater bladder, which is completely empty. In fact, it's so empty that it actually pulled a vacuum and collapsed the hose in the lower right of your screen. 
Uh, so pretty boring watching a bladder drain, but it drains out pretty good. Maybe there's one gallon left, maybe less, um, and that's just gravity from that hose. So anyway, this is an overview of the uh, third experiment. The first two were so embarrassing, I didn't make videos of them, of the uh, water bladder sharing space in the van. I think the things that I would change is I would go with a bigger water bladder or a smaller container space. Uh, still some work to do on the venting, both on the fresh and gray water tanks. Nothing that can't be dealt with. It's okay. Um, it's usable. In fact, we plan to use it here shortly. But um, there's still some little tweaks to be doing. So anyway, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll get some of this stuff written up on our blog site one of these days. But uh, for now, there's a quick video to give you an update of what's happening. So that's Van Margaret. Oh, you can see in the upper left there, I'm, I've got looking at the uh, vent cap, the vacuum breaker. All right, thanks for watching. Appreciate your time.